So you're probably aware that um, I introduced a gesture into Star Trek. <laughs> Is that funny? I think you're ahead of me. OK. <laughs> we were doing an episode called A Mock Time. And uh, it was, I was particularly excited about this episode. It was a beautifully written script by a wonderful writer named Theodore Sturgeon. It was poetic. It was exciting. It was exotic. And uh, it, it brought a lot of new ideas to us about Star Trek, and particularly about the Vulcan people and, and my character, Mr. Spock. We were going to Vulcan for the first time, and we were going to see other Vulcans. We'd never seen another Vulcan before, only Spock. For those of you who don't know, Spock is from a planet called Vulcan. <laughs> and uh, Spock had, uh, a, was a mixed heritage. He had a, a, a human mother and a Vulcan father. And um, in this episode, we're told that Spock has to go home to fulfill a marriage betrothal that was created when he was a child. So he's going home to be married. And, and uh, once every seven years, the Vulcans come into heat. And <laughs> it's a very serious event. <laughs> and, uh, and uh, well worth waiting for, actually. <laughs> So uh, we go to, we're, we're soon, on the day we go to Vulcan, and uh, we land on the planet. Uh, Captain Kirk, William Shatner, Dr. McCoy, DeForest Kelly, and myself. And a uh, procession comes out to meet us, lady being carried in a sedan chair, a uh, wonderful actress named Celia Lofsky, who we discover is the matriarch of the planet. She's going to preside over Spock's wedding. And uh, they sit her down, and I'm to approach her, and she's to say, welcome home, Spock, and I'm supposed to say, it's nice to be here, or whatever. I don't remember exactly what I was supposed to say, but I'm, I'm looking for touches that I can introduce that have to do with, with the Vulcan people, the Vulcan culture. I'm looking to build some of the Vulcan story. And I said to the director, I think that we should find something special that Vulcans do when they meet. And, and he said, what do you mean? And I said, well, humans shake hands. Military people salute each other. Um, Asian people bow to each other. Um, we should have something the Vulcans do. And he said, well, what do you have in mind? So I reached back to when I was about uh, maybe eight or nine years old uh, at a Jewish high holiday service, Orthodox synagogue with my family. And there comes a point in the service where the congregation is blessed <clears throat> by a group, particularly an Orthodox uh, ceremony, a group of men known as Kohanim. They are the, the members of the priestly tribe of the Hebrews. They get up to bless the congregation. And they're standing in front of the congregation just as I'm standing in front of you. There were several of them, in this case, maybe five or six of them. And they start chanting this prayer. And they're doing it in Hebrew, loud, passionate, almost like a revival meeting. And my father said to me, don't look. And in fact, People in the congregation have got their heads covered with their prayer shawls and or their hands over their eyes and they're not, not looking. But I was eight and I, <laughs> I snuck a peek. And what I saw, I'm, I'm going to show you a picture of myself demonstrating what I saw. This is what it looked like. <laughs> and they're chanting this prayer loud and passionate. <clears throat> and it struck me. I got kind of a chill. I thought, wow, something important is happening here. And I, that gesture made such an impression on me that I immediately started working to be able to do it. Years of diligent practice and self-denial <laughs> until I mastered it. I could do it any time, any place, either hand. I had no idea what the prayer was, or why they would, why you're supposed to cover your eyes, I just, just didn't know, or what that gesture was. I learned later that the prayer is one in, in the Old and the New Testament. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord cause his countenance to shine upon you. May the Lord turn his graciousness unto you and grant you peace. And they're shouting that in Hebrew. The gesture 
is the shape. I see the cameras coming out. <laughs> it's quite, quite magical. <laughs> this gesture makes flashes go off. <laughs> The gesture is the shape of a letter in the Hebrew alphabet called the letter Shin, which is the first letter in the word Shaddai, which is a name for God. It's also the first letter in the word Shalom, which means peace. It's also the first letter in the word Shekhinah, which is the name of the feminine aspect of God. So I learned that eventually, and it took me a long time to learn why you're not supposed to look. My wife's cousin, John Rosap, is a rabbi at Temple Israel in Hollywood. And I asked him this question some years ago. Why do we not look? And he said, the legend is that when these gentlemen are saying this prayer, doing this blessing, the Shekhinah, the feminine aspect of God, comes into the sanctuary to bless the congregation. And you dare not see her because she's a deity, and she gives off a light that's so powerful that you could be seriously injured and it even could be fatal. So you don't want to, you protect yourself by covering your eyes. And I thought, wow, that's a great story. I was working with, uh, well, first let me say that um, I was looking at a, um, a collection in New York. A man named Henry Buell has a very important collection of uh, photo photography based on the human hand. And uh, when I saw that collection, I thought, I have an image that might be useful to him. And, and this is what I gave him, and it's now in that collection. This was my version of that gesture. It's my own hand, but it's been manipulated in the dark room by me, solarized and extended. I was working with uh, figure photography, female figure photography at the time. And uh, I began to introduce that image, that, that shape, into some of the work, like this, for example, as a way of exploring the Shekhinah the feminine aspect of God. I wanted it to be mystical. I wanted it to be uh, intriguing. And this was one of the first images that I created using that, uh, that shape. And eventually, I came to this. This was the, uh, the cover of a book called Shekhinah. Uh, it's a collection of images based on that idea, the feminine aspect of God, in the book, with an explanation of the, of the story, with the story that I just told you about what it means and how it came about. And uh, this was the last time I ever did that gesture on camera. This is from the last, Star Trek, the last Star Trek movie about two years ago. So that's, this was the beginning for me <coughs> of working, <coughs> working conceptually.